next we have for again on the, on the, the big picture view here we have um, Lori Cutlass. Lori is executive director of the Wisconsin Business Alliance, which is a statewide business organization. Um, second year, uh, actually our first anniversary is later this month. Okay. So, so I'm asking think of the we're a little the planning process. Let's look at that. Okay. Um, so Lori will be giving us um, another uh, overview perspective. Um, to, to add into more of what JP said. Lori Thomas. Thank you. employees 
they might want to go through the individual exchange as opposed to going to whatever you offer. So say you offer private insurance and they have to pay a certain premium, they might elect to go through the individual exchange. Um, as a small business owner, if, if you don't have employees, you would go through that individual exchange as well. Um, and then the SHOP marketplace is Small Business Health Options Program is what SHOP stands for. And so that's for businesses that have employees. Um, well, I want to work quickly on that. Um, children under the up to age 26, by the way, that's um, in, they can be married and be on your plan. And I, my daughter just got married. And, um, so that, that's how we know these things at my house. So in case it comes up around around your family, you know, and, bridal showers or something, you can. <laughs> and, and that was already in state law, so uh, functionally there's not a lot of change between uh, or Scott tonight on that, that that was already. It was, it, was it was it was 27 actually, and uh, moved to to, to uh, uh, be similar to the federal law because of tax implications. And it was so. married before, so you married yes. before. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and I actually thought that um, that if you got married, you got bumped off, but that's yeah. actually not true. We thought that too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm a it's wedding photographer, and I noticed like the brides and grooms kept getting older and older, and one of them actually told me that they waited because they thought they were going to get kicked off their parents' insurance. So, uh, not true. Sorry. Uh, no worries. Right. Our server wants to bend the clock. <laughs> if your server is trying to figure out, so how many, what would you plan on? We got one up search. To clarify, when you were talking about the deductible at two thousand yeah. dollars, is that for employers over fifty, under fifty, or that's any? only um, so employers two to fifty. So uh, employers between two and fifty have a two thousand dollar deductible limit. Okay. Uh, all markets, individual, uh, small group, and large group, have uh, what's called an out-of-pocket maximum, which includes all your deductibles, all your copays, all your coinsurances, and that's limited to sixty-three fifty, uh, six thousand three hundred fifty dollars for this first year. And um, and then twelve thousand seven hundred for the family, but that only applies in network. Both of all these apply only in network. So two thousand four thousand is the only small employer. Thank you. When you have your deductible, your you said every plan is going to have like the well child checkup and stuff like that. You don't have to pay that for the deductible. That's just. Like your care. once a year kind of a thing, your yep. children going for shots, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, preventive care is uh, is is prohibited without uh, without so applying to pay. pays or deductibles okay. on all policies. And one thing to think about when you're calculating the number of employees, your family, from what I understand, does not count towards that total. So if you employ a spouse or a child or something like that, that they don't count toward your total. Um, so features of the shop. It will allow you to compare health plans online. You control the coverage you offer for employees if you elect to offer coverage at all. You decide how much you will pay toward employee premiums. And as I mentioned, all plans offer the, the minimum preventive care, etc. Now, you may qualify for a tax credit that's worth up to 50% of your premium cost. So, what that looks like is it's for for-profit businesses only, non-profits, there is, I think there is a credit, but it's set up a little bit differently. You have to have fewer than 25 full-time equivalent employees. You need to pay at least 50% of your employees' premiums. And the average salaries can average um, no more, annual salaries can average no more than $50,000. So say you pay total wages of $200,000, and you have 10 full-time equivalent employees, you would divide that and 20,000 would be the average amount that you're paying, so you would qualify. Um, now beginning in 2014, this tax credit is available only to businesses that uh, purchase their plans through SHOP. And I think I, I just read something yesterday that this can be applied retroactively, is that right? Do you, any of you guys know about this? If you've been paying your employees premiums since the Affordable Care Act went into effect, can ret retroactively apply this, uh, I think it's like a 35% tax credit. So you might want to ask your tax preparer about that. Cheryl's nodding. Cheryl is an expert at this in her own right. It's <laughs> very lucky to have her as a resource. Um, so calculating and claiming your credit. There is 
uh, an IRS form that you can use, but actually I think it's easier to use um, an online calculator, and we have a link to it on our website. It's wisconsinbusinessalliance.com slash ACA. It's, the calculator is embedded on there. You can enter how many employees you have, how much of the premium you're going to pay, and it calculates what your tax credit would be, so you can kind of uh, experiment with different scenarios. Um, I think that's very useful. Right now, we don't really know what the rates are, but hopefully we'll, be, we'll know that soon, and that'll be really helpful um, as we approach October 1st. <coughs> um, now, not only do you qualify, you know, could you qualify for the credit, but you can also qualify for a deduction. So since the amount of the premium is more than the total credit, if you're eligible, you can claim a business expense deduction for the difference. So that's a credit and a deduction. So if you decide that you want to do this, you want to offer this to your employees, you can enroll either through a broker. If you've already got a broker, you can go right through them, just like you've been doing. Or you can go, when you go online and you're looking at different plans, you can enroll right there at the shop. Um, as far as payments go, you can collect the employee share of premiums through payroll deduction. You can make contributions to shops, so you can make your payments with pre-tax dollars, which is good. Um, then you can get one monthly bill and make one monthly payment directly to shop. So I think they've tried to make this as easy as they can. Um, so how to make your choice. No one can tell you. <laughs> this is your judgment call. You can determine that you determine what your employees pay, you know, because you are determining how much of the premium they pay, if any, um, what their deductible will be, and their co-pays, their out-of-pocket, all of that. In general, the lower premiums lead to higher out-of-pocket. So the bronze plans um, have those lower premiums, but then if your employees use a lot of health care, there's a high likelihood that they'll be hit with a lot of expenses. Um, higher premiums. The, the platinum plans um, tend to have a lower out-of-pocket cost for your employees. Um, keep in mind, the plan with the lowest premium might not provide you or your employees with the best overall value. Now, on October 1st, all employers are required to notify their employees about the new exchanges. There are two forms that um, have been made available by the U.S. Department of Labor. They're also linked from our website, uh, wisconsinbusinessalliance.com slash ACA. You use one form if you're going to offer health insurance or if you think you will. You use another form if you don't offer insurance, don't think you're going to. This has to be done on October 1st, and there's a significant penalty per employee if you don't. So, you know, we were just, I was just talking to, Dr. Norbaum is here from Wausau. <laughs> And uh, she was talking to an attorney yesterday and, you know, saying, well, what if people are kind of on the fence? You know, if the rates aren't available, it's kind of hard to decide what, what we're going to do. And uh, the attorney <laughs> said it's okay to file one, one form or the other um, and then modify it later. If you decide that you're not going to offer coverage, but then you change your mind. From what we understand, there's no penalty and, and maybe, <coughs> maybe these other guys can help me out with that. Um, but the important thing is that you notify your employees by October 1st of the existence of the exchanges. And again, those forms are online. Just print it out, fill in a few lines, and you're done. Uh, Lori, we'll, uh, we'll touch on this, but um, there, we had a conversation at our ambassador's meeting yesterday about this. I want to get back to you, to Andrea, on this. Um, there, um, in general, people who believe that you have to have to be have this apply to you, this employee notification requirement, you had to have 500000 in revenue. There is some disagreement about that. Um, it's generally those covered just by the FLSA. Other people aren't so sure. So what I'm recommending, I'm not an attorney and I've never played one on television and I did not stay at Holiday Inn Express last night, but when in doubt, file the form. Just, it, it, it will not, it will cost you an hour or two of your time to file the form, but it would be, in my opinion, better to file the form and discover you didn't need to, then the other way. 
because, oops, I didn't think it applied to me, has, at least in my experience, never been an excuse with the Internal Revenue Service. And those guys scared the lives out of me. So that is our recommendation. And I, I spoke to two accountants and an attorney yesterday, and they all three said to me, we're not exactly certain, so we're saying file the form. Door alarm all clear. Door alarm all clear. That's probably good advice. From what I've read, it's only businesses that are um, under the Fair Labor Standards Act. Um, but, like Cheryl said, if in doubt, go ahead and file. There's no penalty for filing. So, look, just a quick question. Sorry. So you're filing for your employees, or they have to file? As, as far as I understand, it's, that you, it's filing a form that shows that you have notified them. And what you are going to. You have to How notify your employees. How do you verify that you notified them? Yes. Is you have to notify your employees. That's the notification. Yeah, does it have to be in letterhead or email, or how do you notify yeah. them? You can either way. Email. Yeah. There's I, in, in in my packet. There's copies of the forms, so so you have those, and you can go back there. The requirement is that you notify your employees, and you can use the standard electronic notification that's used for other employee notifications, given that you have a way for employees that don't have corporate email to get it and things like that. So however you inform employees of all of the other things that you have to do, that is it. You're not filing with the federal government. You're just telling your employees that this is available October 1st, and whether you have insurance or not. So it's just, as you understand, it's just important to have proof that you actually did that? Yeah. Just Email it to all employees, and you've got to have something there for the employees that don't have uh, email, or make a <coughs> copy for everybody and say we distributed it. And they might, I mean, they might even have posters or something like uh, the material safety data sheets and things like that, you know, that are posted in the workplace. I'm not sure if that's going to evolve as we go or not. Um, if you have questions, you can call this 1-800 number, or you can visit healthcare.gov/smallbusiness and. This is actually a pretty useful site. It has, um, it's kind of like a wizard. If you've been through a wizard website where it says, how many employees do you have? And you type it in and then it changes. You know, first it asks you what state you're in and it adapts to your special circumstances. And again, you know, when it all is said and done, it really does come down to you, to, to your, uh, it's your decision about what you want to do for your employees. So, thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Th